wet market. Today, for those who have not visited Malaysia per se or even Kuala Lumpur, if you go to the wet market like what the, form, the present Thai minister sum up, when he visited Kuala Lumpur a couple of months ago, he asked to visit the wet market. Thereby, he saw for himself how live birds are slaughtered. We know very well that this carries a lot of risk, hygiene factor and so on and so forth. Hong Kong decided to remove that sector altogether, slowly removing it, not majority of them. Singapore removed it a couple of years ago. They are very systematic because that could be the uh, reservoir for possible HPAI. 40% goes to the processing plant. It's not very popular among the Chinese and the Indian, even the Malays. Malays constitute something like 55% of the population. Another 5 to 10% are the, the natives. They are also are the Bumiputra of the country. 40% goes to the processing plant. It's not popular in a sense because these are chilled. And they traditionally, Malaysian loves warm chicken. To them, the perception is that once the chicken slaughtered, it must be sold. If it's kept in the chill, uh, cold room or so ever, they are, they are thinking is that these birds are normally sick and sick birds go to processing plant to be slaughtered because they can't see the healthy pinkish colour of, of the bird. And then there are no less than 20 VHM plants. What are VHM plants? It stands for Veterinary Health Mark. These are the mark that is certified by the government, Department of Veterans uh, Services, that gives certificate, some sort like HACCP, and so on and so forth. Export market for broiler live broilers to Singapore, dress broilers to Singapore, Brunei, and further process products to Middle East, Brunei, and many other Muslim countries. A couple of years, Malaysian government are trying very hard to uh, sell our halalness of our product. Hal halal is, you see, to the, the Muslim community, birds or chicken that slaughter in the Islamic way are considered halal. And halal itself is, actually is the whole, it encompasses the whole setup. Halal itself does not mean that it's the way you slaughter. Halal goes on even from beginning to the end. There is traceability, that is from a farm, right up to slaughtering time, processing, storage, and sale. So if you meet up to the hygiene requirement, you consider the product as halal. And to, to have a VHM logo, you need to be halal, and you need to have a, a proper processing plant. Layers. We produce something like 20 million eggs per day, and there are 90 farms that have more than 150,000 eggs per day production. Today, we have something close to 45 farms. Many of the small ones have grown big, or many of the small ones have closed down. Modern close housing efficient. This, this group of farmers really invest in the infrastructure to produce a very economical, uh, because of economy and size, their cost of production drop tremendously. Market structure, whole eggs, are as, uh, local market and export. We can consume something like close to 17.5 million eggs a day. In festive season, maybe about 18 to 19 million eggs a day. So actually, we are in excess again. And there are two liquid egg processing plants. Um, not much activities over the plants because the demand for liquid egg is not there. And then I believe that they do not have an economy of size due to the, the nature of business. Broiler chicks, 18 broiler breeder farms, smaller ones expected to close down due to market restructuring. You see, in the past, small breeder farms can survive because they produce the chicks and they sell it to the, the independent farmers. But what happens is the independent farmers, broiler farmers close down, they lose the market size. They either grow big or they are sold out by many other bigger farms. We produce something like 40 to 42 million chicks per month and most breeder farms are owned by poultry integrators, as mentioned earlier. Ducks sell sufficient with local export market. Almost half a million ducks per week produced. Duck eggs, 73 million eggs per annum. And export market, live ducks, drag ducks. This, this, surprisingly, this, this market is mainly for 
for Malaysia, there's a, a, a dialect among the Chinese who love ducks and duck eggs. The Teochew people. And Singapore has got a lot of Teochew population just like in, in West Malaysia. Swine. Pigs are produced in the Peninsula States and East Malaysia. Local consumption for Peninsula and East Malaysia with some export to Brunei. Potential for export market from East Malaysia. And in East Malaysia, it's with Sarawak. That, that's two states are uh, FMD free, food and mouth disease free. And we produce something like 2.7 million pokers per annum. Malaysian context, how are, how are things? You see, one of the assignments besides giving the talk is that the producer asked me, when you come over, you meet up with the, uh, the sellers of raw material or even the farmers or even the NGOs, you have only one question to ask. Will it be good news? When Thomas this morning mentioned that corn is undervalued, so is palm oil. That's bad news to us. So, we, so I, I sat beside Julius over there in, from Iowa, and he mentioned that what he said is right. No producer should be at a loss, whether you are corn producer, soya producer, or even poultry producer, or even pig producer. Every sector, there must be a, a margin to be made. Otherwise, you'll be phasing out, out of the picture. So, Malaysian context, how are things? Our turnover has grown. 8 billion in 2007 to almost 10 we expect this year. Has per capita consumption increased? I mean, if, if, we divide, if we divide over the, the market value over the, the population who has not grown much, you will say that per, per, per capita consumption has increased because your production numbers have increased. But in fact, it has not. The June report came out, CPI increased month on month, 7.7, and just a couple of weeks ago, 8.5%. The demand actually has shrunk. After the Prime Minister announced the, the Prime Minister of Malaysia have announced the increase of uh, subsidized fuel of 41%, diesel of 61%, the first couple of weeks, market just dropped. The demand just becomes sluggish. People become, people pull back their investment. No, sorry, they pull back their consumption because of the, it's, it's something so new, you know. Because the next, thing, the next few slides we are going to show you, I'm going to show you why, why is that have uh, the reaction of the public, the consumer towards this product. You look here, the farm value towards the end 2006, about 8 billion. But before that, it will be interesting if you look at beef, 569 million which constitute 25%. We only sell sufficient for 25%. Mutton, 10%. Milk, 45%. So if there are any investors who want to invest in Malaysia to produce these three items, we've got plenty of market. But on the other hand, on the other hand, eggs, pork, and uh, chicken are well above the 100% mark. What are our production costs today? Broilers, Five ringgit per kilo X farm. Taking in consideration of raw material, including the energy increase, that is the, the, the tarification, the tariff increase in electricity and also uh, fuel for transport. Eggs, 30 cents per piece. PO chicks, 140 each, depend on which breed you breed. Ducks, 480 per kilo X farm. Swine, 7 ringgit. Our production cost 36 months ago. Broilers 3.20, 3.20, eggs 18 cents, chicks 90 cents, ducks 3.40, and swine 4.40. What you see is a sharp increase. As the price increases, demand dampens, loss in economy of sales. What happened is that the sudden setback of demand caused many of farmers to slow down in their input. And whether you like it or not, every slowdown of input will see the effect of losing the economy of scale. And there will be jeopardy in maintenance of all high numbers. Of course, there are some companies who just bulldoze all the way through, thinking that